We've got tips and recipes for healthy living. So for fun and inspiration, come and join us in the raw food world. Welcome everybody. This is Matt Monarch with the Raw Food World TV show. Coming at you in Vilcabamba, Ecuador. So, babe, why is it that everybody thought you were sick the other day? I don't know. Suddenly we're getting emails and messages. Everyone thought I looked deathly. What I think happened was we had a light right here so everyone could see us better. So it was like kind of like maybe coming on Angela and it looked ghostly or something. I think everyone always thinks I look like a ghost, so it didn't really matter. <laughs> Well, it is a bit of a scary light, isn't it? Yeah, but what else could it have been? We thought there might have been a few things. Um, maybe because I'm detoxing the US still. Oh. Uh, I think you look beautiful all the time. I just want to marry you again. <laughs> we already got married twice. Once in the US and once in Ecuador. Where else should we get married? Should we go to Peru? Peru. All right, so I got a question for you guys. What do you think about this style every once in a while? I know I've been doing it quite often. The uh, Using the computer camera, here's our house, here's us just bibbling, bambling, boom. I don't know, what do you think, babe? You think they like this method? I think they probably want to see Sparky. Sparky? Yeah, <laughs> I think they like the outside stuff. Uh, yeah, we'll do that too. I mean, I guess it's just balance. Yes. Sparky is still here. Lots of you have been asking about him. He, he's on another plot of land right now because as soon as the baby was born, cherry star, um, it's kind of dangerous to have a stallion around when there's a baby. It's kind of dangerous to have a stallion around anyway for anyone, um, as we're learning. But he's down by the riverside, down by the riverside, down by the riverside. Sparky's eating carrots. Down by the riverside, and one day you'll see him again. Back to us getting married? Yes. Maybe you could sing the married song. Um, Where I go get a hat. And then, uh, oh, soldier, soldier, won't you marry me with your musket, pipe, and drum? Oh no, sweet maid, I cannot marry thee because I have no gloves to put on. So off she went to her grandfather's chest and brought him some gloves of the very, very best. And the soldier put them on. Oh, soldier, soldier, what you <laughs> me? You must get pipe and drum. Oh, no, sweet maid, I can't marry thee because I have no knickers to put on. Do you guys know what knickers are? Maybe we should show them your knickers. <laughs> okay, everybody, this is a raw food TV show. Whoops. <laughs> Do you have like an orange or something? <laughs> Apple? I don't know. I don't know. All right. So um, maybe I could talk about macro and micronutrients again. That sounds very sensible. Okay. So yesterday I kind of touched on this, but I wanted to go deeper into macro and micronutrients. What's a macronutrient? A macronutrient is when is like the type of meal that gives you energy and it ha it's like calories. Like uh, for raw food, it would be avocados, fruit, all solid foods, salads. It's like carbs, fat, protein, right? It's the big guys. Right. To give you energy. Big nutrient guys. So what's a micronutrient? A micronutrient is the stuff that's readily absorbable. It kind of helps us avoid deficiency. It gives us what our bodies need, such as green juice, royal jelly, you know, bee pollen if it's really, really fresh. Um, pine pollen. Uh. You guys, give me one more week and we have a new product for you. Insane. It's called the sperm of the forest. It's not what it's really called. That's just what it is. I took some of this stuff and I was flying high, like ridiculously flying high. Audio clarity can be a micronutrient, minerals. So these are like the little guys, right? The minerals yeah. and the vitamins and phytonutrients and... Yeah. And guys, I kind of was just testing just to see what I do this sometimes. I tested, like I overdosed on audio clarity to see what happened. I really felt at that time. 
I was buzzing like crazy. It was like super mineral. Like, don't do that at home, though. <laughs> I'm a pretty clean guy. I'm taking it for a while. Okay, so these are the micronutrients. Readily absorbable, goes right in. Your body utilizes that for, you know, um, to avoid deficiency. You get your vitamins, you get your minerals, you get all that fun stuff. Now, as soon as you have your first macronutrient meal, your absorption rate goes down for the rest of the day. This is huge. It is crucial. Crucial! Crucial! To eat micronutrients for your first meal of the day and as many after that as you possibly can before you just eat your macronutrient meal. When you eat a macronutrient meal, fermentation occurs, which is just simply a natural process of digestion. So now, when you eat this macronutrient meal, you've got all this gas, fermentation, and possibly food particles. This, this stays with us a lot longer than you think you need needs to be, and it it obstructs the pathway to these absorbable nutrients. Can you give some examples of micronutrient meals you're suggesting, Mr. Monarch? A green vegetable juice. What else? Out of clarity. What else? Some coconut water. Not the young Thai ones, the ones we have here. Royal jelly powder. What else? Fresh bee pollen. What else? Green food powder. Something more? What about propolis? Sure. What about... Maybe a small bit of honey. What about... Three pounds of figs. No. Oh. Uh why? Because that's some, that's gonna it's gonna lower your absorption rate. Fermentation gas happens immediately. So what happens is that in the evening time, you cleanse, you give off a lot of carbon dioxide. Your body is cleaned out of the gas and fermentation. Is your digestive system is completely cleaned out, and now your body wants micronutrients again. Or no, no, it doesn't want. It just wants food again. So what happens is if you put a macronutrient right in, there you go again. The first meal of the day. But when you, it's like your body wants food when you, for your first meal. But if you put micronutrients in, it just sucks it right up. I mean, how many people out there, they have a, a meal, and if, especially if you're not letting that meal digest, this is ridiculous. You're really not going to get absorption. So let's say you have that meal, and then you drink that green juice. How many people have done that before, and they realize, I'm not getting the maximum benefit from this green juice if I were to drink this before I ate? So what happens when a food contains macronutrients? Let's say you eat some a bowl of berries. So you're getting a load of carbohydrate, but you're also getting all the little micronutrients at the same time. Then what? Those are, those are like antioxidants and stuff like that. That like gets free radicals. It's not necessarily a micronutrient. I mean, I'm sure there's micronutrients in all the stuff we eat, but the key is to do it in the most readily absorbable way so it doesn't obstruct the body and cause gas and make it so it's difficult to absorb in the future. As soon as you eat that salad or that big meal that just is stupid, no, it's not stupid. It gives you energy and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong. I eat a huge macronutrient meal every single day. I used to eat two every single day until recently. But you spend the majority of the day focusing on micronutrients. Right. And I'm not saying you have to do that either. But I would say the first meal of the day, do micronutrients. And then wait like a half hour to an hour and do another micronutrient meal. Maybe even bust out four of those before you even have your macronutrient meal. That's crucial. I mean, that's key. <laughs> yeah and don't get me wrong you do get nutrients when you have macronutrient meals like for example you're going to get your omega fatty acids that way but you know we don't chew our food it's not going to absorb as nicely and stuff like that let's talk about a green smoothie real quick with fruit that's kind of like in between micro and macronutrients mm -hmm. so if you make your first meal a green smoothie of the day that's all grand and stuff and you're going to absorb a lot of that However, 
the meals after that might not be as readily absorbable as if you did like less fruit and stuff like that. Fruit causes fermentation and gas within the body. It's going to block the pathway for optimal absorption. You will absorb, don't get me wrong, but for optimal absorption is what I'm talking about. To hopefully avoid deficiencies in the long run. Yeah, absolutely. And then there's people that just eat all day long. They don't even let their meal digest before that. And then there's all these raw fooders that end up with marginal deficiencies. When, when I first went to California to meet Mr. Monarch, he was screaming at me all the time about not overlapping meals. I didn't even know what that meant. I haven't looked. That was like five years ago now. And yeah, so overlapping meals is when you eat something and then before that's fully digested, it's still like in the process in your stomach, you eat something else. And then you get in a kind of mess in your stomach. And it's not, it's just not as kind on the body. It's not as easy for the body to handle digestion in that way. So now you realize. Absolutely. Because you've become cleaner and you've been doing these habits and once you start practicing these habits of non-overlapping and then when you overlap, you notice the difference. Mm -hmm. It's like when you start practicing raw food and then you eat cooked food, you notice the difference. Now it make me sound like a ranting jerk. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very helpful, nice one, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Baba. Yes. Know it. Maybe you want to sing him a goodbye song? No. Bye bye. Yeah. Mind your estate, Monarch. <laughs> Not Monarch. Lock in the house. We'll see you again tomorrow. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again at the Raw Food World.